In the vast expanse above, our sky unfurls its narrative, a symphony of celestial movements that narrate the story of day and night. From the gentle clouds to the twinkle and brilliance of the stars, it's a saga of consistent change and timeless beauty. Join me in this odyssey as we delve into the atmospheric wonders. This is when the sunset was about to appear. The sky and clouds a harsh grey. There is barely any colour at this time. The sky provides many things, like wind, to power this wind turbine. Wind turbines give everywhere electricity. Well, not everywhere, mostly just houses and buildings. Another thing that flows through the sky is oxygen. Oxygen comes from plants during photosynthesis. This is when plants would get light, water and carbon dioxide to make glucose and oxygen, which we breathe. Carbon dioxide flows through the air from us breathing and plants take that carbon dioxide and make oxygen with it. If you look up in the sky, you see that it's mostly blue. It's mostly blue because all the light coming to Earth is mostly blue. There are other colours too, like yellow and orange. Because this is early in the morning, if you look closely, you can see this bright light. This bright light is actually Venus. This is as close as my camera zooms into Venus. Venus is around the size of Earth and has the same gravity as Earth. And it's the hottest planet due to the greenhouse effect. For one day on Venus, it will take 243 Earth days. And for a year on Venus, it will take 225 Earth days. Venus's days are longer than its years because it has slower rotation, causing it to, to have slower days. This is a hyperlapse of the sun starting to rise. You can see the movement of the clouds. Clouds form during the water cycle. When water evaporates and turns into water vapour, then it goes into the air and combines into our fluffy clouds. And they move on somewhere else to eventually rain down upon. Though clouds look like giant flying weightless puffballs, they are actually really, really heavy. They can weigh around a million pounds. It's because of all that water inside of them. People use clouds to predict the weather. Like if it's a grey cloud, it would probably be a thunderstorm. Now, if you look closely, you can see some orange next to the mountain. This is from the sun rising. This is because the light must travel through more of the atmosphere than it does when the sun is overhead. This results in more scattering of the light, including longer wavelengths, such as yellow, orange and red, which creates a colourful sunrise and sunset skies. Let's check on Venus again to see if it's still there. And yes, Venus is still here, but it's probably not going to be there for long. Let's check back on the sunrise. A sunrise lasts around 5 to 15 minutes long, but I don't have the time to show you, so maybe I'll show you in another video. This is another hyperlapse. You can see the cloud movement once again. Let's see how much of the orange comes up. You can now see the ray of orange has now extended, showing us more of its beautiful colours. This means the sun is almost up. This is an aeroplane. Aeroplanes fly through the air, if you haven't noticed. They fly because aeroplanes' wings are shaped to make air move 
over the top of the wing, lifting it up. The first ever plane was invented by the Wright brothers in 1903. And ever since, planes have gotten way more advanced. If you look behind the plane, you can see the plane's contrails. Contrails are very bad for the environment. They release a lot of carbon dioxide, which is bad. Now the sky has turned blue, but this means Venus is now gone. It's still there, but the sky's too bright for us to see it. The sky has now gotten very orange, and now it's mostly blue. The sun is pretty much up now. It's just behind the mountains. It is now a different time of day. The clouds have covered the whole entire sky. This cloud formation is called cirrostratus clouds. It basically covers the whole entire sky. Here it is from another angle. And yes, it's even covered the other side. Now this is another day and we're somewhere else. The sky is misty here. Mist is formed from tiny water droplets hanging in the sky. Mist is often confused with fog, but they differ in density. Fog is more denser and can extend over a larger area. Mist is commonly associated with atmospheric conditions. Mist provides plants moisture and contributes to the water cycle. There's mist among these trees. Each branch and leaf becomes the canvas for the delicate water drops. If you look down the mountain, you can see the mist cloaking the landscape in its greyish colours. Observe as the water droplets form outstretched on this goat willow. The droplets cling gracefully reflecting the world around it. These droplets also benefit plants. The plants can absorb these droplets. They use them for photosynthesis to make glucose. Glucose is their energy. Let's move on to rain. You can see water droplets don't just form on plants, they can form anywhere and everywhere. Rain happens when clouds get too heavy or too full of water, then the water just drops out of the cloud. And rain has a distinctive smell. Even though water doesn't have smell, rain does have a smell because it moistures the ground which gives it a smell. The shape of a raindrop is the shape of a sphere, just like our teardrops. A rainy sky is mostly grey, unless it's sunny, then it will make a rainbow. Rainbows happen when the sun is reflecting off of the raindrop. Now on to night. Though you may not see it much, there are clouds at night, like you can see here. The giant glowing orb in the sky at night is actually really dark if you walk on the moon. The surface doesn't get as much light as the Earth, so it's much darker. The moon was made when a rock smashed into Earth, causing the moon to orbit Earth. The moon makes the tides move on Earth. The moon is also moving away from Earth, very slowly. Did you know one day on the moon is 29 Earth days? That is a lot 
of days. A year on the moon is 27 Earth days. That is much less than Earth's years. You can see the clouds in the night sky. Oh, if you're wondering how nighttime works, it's because the sun is on the other side of the Earth now. So leaving this side in the dark. When it turns night, all the nocturnal animals come out, like owls, bats, and other animals. This is much earlier than what we saw. This is still the moon, although it looks like the sun. The sky is a nice, hazy, dark blue. You may notice in winter, night comes quicker because the day is short and as the sun moves towards the southern horizon and lengthens as it moves northwards. Thanks for watching my video. This would be the end of Our Sky. If you want more nature videos, please consider liking and subscribing. See you next time on CJ Nature.